Hey, what is up guys? Marcy here, back to do another video, and I did record this game yesterday, but unfortunately I had my microphone on mute, so I'm going to be recording this once again, and you may be wondering where I've been. Well, I've been busy on that patch, R21E, which I did release yesterday, so I highly encourage you guys to get that, um, and yeah, the change list you can find down below in the video description, I'm sure I'll pin a comment for it as well. There's a bunch of fixes, uh, new... Uh, Christmas themed maps as well as uh, important changes made and I always recommend you guys get the 4k mod as well I made it to work with R21 the two go together perfectly so this game here is going to be versus Senna on tournament airstrip I want to provide some content now you may have noticed by now that I do have a little bit of a cold that is true Never, nonetheless I'm gonna do my best to provide some content and I'm going to be playing as the Black Hand faction in this particular game here. I will try and recall the events of it. it, I'm obviously going to have an easier time because I did this video before. I'm not going to take that contested spike because I don't know my opponent's faction. Uh, Raider Buggy first can reach that middle spike and negate an engineer. Unless you're a GDI and you dig a foxhole. You can probably even take that garrisonable structure and um, safely put your engineer inside of there. So yeah, black hand on this map, uh, pretty good. Uh, bike buggy, of course, is the best thing to do, and then it does turn into a bit of a challenge later on if you're against GDI trying to contest that bottom field against Juggernaut spam. But I see he's screened, so no Juggernauts to contend with. But on a map like this, Juggernauts in the late game can be tricky to deal with. With the new Tiberium Vein implementation, uh, I feel Juggernauts are going to be a little bit less oppressive versus Nod Factions. Because now the Juggernauts will uh, take more damage. They won't be destroyed. I nerfed the damage by 20% on the Tiberium Vein detonation. And spoiler alert, that is actually the nerf EA should have applied in 1.02. It was on the 1.01 patch notes that they had nerfed the Tiberium Vein damage by 20%. That never happened. I did nerf it on the damage prior to the main blast of the Tip Vein. Kept the Tiberium Vein um, final blast damage the same, but I did nerf the radius damage. It's what it's called in the in the files by 20%, which coincidentally makes it not one shot kill harvesters and. Uh, units such as Juggernauts, which have the same health as a Harvester. It's a big tier 3 unit, but uh, it's quite vulnerable. It's very good when you escort it with an Engineer, uh, with an MCB, because then you can reclaim those Hus. Hus have an invulnerability time of 5 seconds, and that's not something that's exclusive to a mod, that's just how it is in this game. Hus can be destroyed for 5 seconds, which means you can put an Engineer in that Hus as soon as it falls. Cabal's exceptional against these Seeker tanks. They don't have much gun armor. It's a hybrid between a light vehicle and a tank. It's not a tank though because it can't crush. It's like a pit bull. I would say it's it's like a pit bull. It has more armor and damage compared to a pit bull, but it does lack in speed. It's uh, roughly the same speed as a Scorpion tank, but it does have the uh, upgrades available to it. And seeing that Senna is Reaper 17, he'll have access to the Attenuated Force Fields upgrade as well as the Shard Launch upgrade, which is uh, very good for the Seekers. Bike swinging in here. I'm going to target these Seekers instead of the Harvesters. Maybe I could have killed a Harvester there, but nonetheless, I did thin some of his forces out. I had the Force Multiplier right there. And yeah, we shall see how this goes. A little bit out of sync on my end here, but I do think that the uh, audio is aligned. If it's not, then I can always edit that in post. Harvester under attack. These bikes swinging in, taking out the harvesters. Uh, I did get away with half a tank of Tiberium, which is pretty good for me. In this patch, Tiberium do visually rep do visually show the Tiberium contents within. So if you take some blue Tiberium, it will show on the harvester itself. 
Grin Harvesters don't, however, but nor do they drop any Tiberium when they're destroyed. In R21, if you have more than two blue crystals in your Harvester, a blue Tiberium crystal will spawn when the Harvester falls. Which is a small detail. Lightning Spike, very good against attack bikes. It pretty much three shots them, which makes it excellent for that area there. It gives Senna also the vision radius. And since my harvesters are unstealth, they're going to be targeted down by that Lightning Spike. It's going to get some chip damage dealt on that harvester. And I'm going to put down a War Factory because I'm super behind in this game. I went for a failed two War Factory. Senna's super ahead. I did not kill any harvesters. I'm trying to take some blue Tiberium, but I'm unfortunately going to be intercepted there. I'm going to get my harvesters chased back. This one may even fall. It's on half health. It's not on that heavy damage state, which means it won't move slower. Something like I like about this game is the fact that units move slowly when they are very damaged. And I'm I very unorthodox. I expanded to the south instead of going for the uh, southeast position. I went for this, this middle southern position, which is very unorthodox. I haven't seen many people do this. I did it because I was queuing units from two war factories in the early game and I thought, well, because I'm not able to build a refinery, I may as well just move my MCB to the middle and capture that Tyrium spike. But it's going to be tricky to defend because Senna has less time to reinforce. But uh, I am in some trouble here. I do have infantry, but there's a ton of shard walkers, so that could probably pose an issue. Nevertheless, I'm going to go for a Reckoner here. And with the recent uh, Dozer Blade change on the Reckoners, it's going to make them effective for defense. You've seen a number of my videos and casts from Cybert where these Reckoners do provide decent defense. They always did, but uh, now they provide even more. And this is the buff they deserve after being nerfed. The speed was nerfed to account for the rush tactics which were pretty broken back in the day, the, especially on many maps where the timing pushes were uh, unbeatable. It's good to see Reckon is used as a defense unit, as a bunker, that's more or less what it is supposed to be, as well as an offensive unit. So it's, it's flexible, and I've deployed several of them there to uh, just defend my field and buy myself time. I'm going to set up an expansion in the southeast position there take my third Tiberium field a uh, good idea here would be to go for a Tiberium vein detonation knowing that units that move out of the tip vein radius won't take any damage it's still going to be good against Reaper 17 because they're going to have tripods at this time on that tip field and tripods are not fast enough to avoid that damage in in the fight like this in in the midst if you can try and force your opponent in a tip field uh, then the Tiber in Vein is going to be amazing. The fire does go down though, for me. And the first tripod does come out, so Reaper 17, they do rely on those tripods and there's a lot of action happening here. Uh, flame tanks, I'm building two or three of them to get some damage dealt because I have just been on the defense for the majority of this game and that is not how you win games. You need to do some harassment and I'm trying my hardest here to get de deal some damage to him. I do have a, a bike which has promoted and I've kept that bike alive. Uh, I'm going to try and milk that to heroic. Uh, I first thought about ranking this up when it was veteran. I did some micro to get the last shots on that bike so it gets the promotion, the uh, veterancy. You only get veterancy for killing units. With structures, every piece of damage accounts for veterancy but unit kills the unit that gets the last shot will gain all of the experience see i'm manipulating this bike here to get the last shot on that seeker uh, which will not promote but it's going to help me promote it up it doesn't take long to promote bikes and they're very effective once heroic they don't have much health like the stealth tank but they do have exceptional dps and they have that uh, twice the rate of fire with that heroic veterancy rank they still move pretty quick in that heavy damage state fast enough to retreat from the seekers 
and Seekers and Shardwalk is still the name of the day for Senna. He's going for those tripods, he's taking that Tiberium film, we can see on the minimap he's got plenty of Tiberium left to take. So do I, but I don't have a tier 3 just yet. I'm going to defend my top base, go for that quad turret, because hey, why not? It's an upgrade that adds a fourth turret to your uh, hub-based turrets, which do not desync the game anymore in this community patch. It's only a thousand dollars, as it was the case in 1.02. Black Hand have very effective uh, Shredder Turret uh, spam because they get the Charged Particle Beam upgrade. Even though it is slightly nerfed against vehicles, it's still amazing and it can act as a meat shield. It's going to also help me to defend against the buzzer hype buzzers if Senna base pushes with his drone platform and places down buzzer hives, those shredded turrets will just aim down the buzzers from those hives. It also defends my infantry against buzzer swarm. Anyway, I've got a heroic bike here, which I said would be good, but sadly for me, I did not have the multitasking to control and look at everything at once. Now, I am doing a good job here, managing my forces in the south and in the north. You can see I'm trying to defend Seekers in the north, but the Seekers will overwhelm my Scorpion tank army up there. Uh, the Scorpion tanks have passed their sell by date, and there we can see the Tiberium Fang going off on those tripods, taking out one or two of them. So yeah, even though the Tiberium Fang detonation is avoidable, the damage is exceptional. So it's, it's not a nerf, it's more of a change. And it's exactly how EA intended it to be. Uh, the uh, fast units will be able to dodge it, but the slower ones will struggle to get out of there. Now, Titans and Predator tanks can avoid it. Uh, well, they don't take all the damage because they can get out of that before the final blast uh, goes off, which will prevent them from dying. The Titans also have the adaptive armor ability, which will substantially decrease the damage um, inflicted on the Titan. And these Reckoners, I'm still continuing to build them for that defense, building more of them because, yeah, I lost that fight pretty decisively. Power plants falling here. I'm upgrading some of my power plants. I decide to sell one of my power, um, the Tiberium chemical plant because I've already summoned in the C Tiberium, or I, I may not have done, but yeah, I needed that power. Uh, it could have been better to power it off, but I really only had one or two support powers left to use. Redeemer does come out, so yeah, I need some tanking force on this map. Uh, infantry is good, but against these Shardwalkers, it's just really difficult without anything besides the uh, infantry. So the Redeemer is going to force out more of these tripods. That's a ton of tripods, and I don't have anything really to, to stop them. A single Obelisk of Light is not going to be enough unless I building block that behind something like a Tiberium Silo. I sell off that Shredder Turret there. And yeah, we can see that the Tiberium is running dry, but I did not have any harvests on the northern Tiberium field. A lot of players um, have a, the habit of keeping one harvester continuously harvesting from a Tiberium field, and that's a mistake in my opinion. I think you should let a tip field regrow, and then in the late game, such as now, you're going to have that extra field, whereas your opponent will not, and that's a big deal. So the race generator does fire off. And we can see what is going on here. This Redeemer is there, used its Rage Gen, inflicted tremendous damage on these tripods, husks being destroyed. And since I don't have a Rage anymore and there's loads of buzzer hives, this infantry force is going to be taken out. The Purifier is doing what it can to destroy those hives, does go down there. And the thing about tripods is, Yes, he's losing tripods, but if I don't have the forces to take out the Huss, Senna can just put down a Buzzer Hive and reclaim those Huss. I don't have any flame units in my Redeemer either, so I can't move forward and destroy those Huss. So yeah, this is a big problem for me. I don't have an, a standing army, and Senna has those Huss which he can take. Now, I did save my Redeemer, and we can see those Shredded Turrets coming in handy here, taking out those Buzzer Swarm Buzzers, which is why I built them in the first place. And now I'm going to rally my harvesters to the north. And I'm in big trouble here because, yeah, I can see he's going to have those husks. And uh, one thing going for me is that I do retain control of that Tiberium spike. It's not 
a lot of income, but on a Tiberium limited situation like this, it's a big deal. No growth stimulator on this field. I don't think there would be the opportunity to build one there. It's unwise, despite it having more health now, it's still not a good idea. But on your safe fields, it's a great thing for Reef 17. They get that passive income. Rage generator fires off once again, but Senna was spamming the S key on his tripods, which will avoid the bulk of that rage gen damage. The Hus does go down there, and now. Yeah, this is uh, looking pretty bad for me because now this Redeemer is getting low on health. There's no reinforcements and the Redeemer on its own will go down. It's, it's just like that. You see the Redeemer goes down. That's my huge tanking force out of battle once more. Now I'm going to be on the defensive. No Reckoners for me this time. And Senna's got these tripods. He can even summon in the Reconstruction Drones. And this game is pretty frantic. I mean, there is several mistakes from both of us here, but I thought it was a great game to highlight. Uh, Senna, for instance, did not get the blue shard upgrade just yet. Uh, that would have helped him versus the infantry. But uh, yeah, I could have got the blue flame upgrade myself and dealt more damage with those infantry, especially when those units went for the crush. The blue flame is a great thing against those units trying to crush me. A building block and Obis of Light. And this is going to be taking out these tripods. These husks are going to be right for taking, but not with that many tripods there. And I do building block with this silo. It's going to buy my obelisk slightly more time to take out that obelisk. But that is going to be it. Anyways, guys, I had to pause my microphone, but here I am back again. Uh, yeah, the husks are going to be reclaimed, but I'm putting down these shredder turrets to stop Senna from reclaiming them, those um, Shredder turrets will automatically target infantry. And I've got a Redeemer rebuilt as well. I'm going to put Engineer in there as well as a Flame Thrower, which is um, acquired by placing a Black Hand squad inside of your Redeemer. You Most players get them by selling their Redeemer Engineer facility. This game I decided uh, not to sell my Redeemer Engineer facility off, which allowed me to quickly get out this secondary Redeemer. And as you see, because he didn't acquire any tripods, this Redeemer is going to make short work of all of these Shard Walkers here. And I know that the Redeemer has a special ability where it can uh, destroy drone platforms and even drone ships. You can actually uh, headbutt a drone ship. The collision of the Redeemer reaches all the way up there and you can kill drone ships that way and it's always satisfying to see when it happens. And yeah, I am going now for more infantry. I've got my Redeemer out, which is my main tanking force. And I can probably at this point move in and see what I can do. I'm building up another force because I did once again uh, let my Tiberium regrow. But it's really down to the wire here. I've got this infantry, which are going to be cleaned up quickly by the Shardwalkers. But because I don't have a tier 3, it's basically the best thing I can build at this moment. I don't think Scorpion Tanks are the way to go when my opponent is still on tier 3. Uh, Radicate Hexpod does come out. That is a problem for me. Now this Redeemer's got the combat and Eradicate Hexpod, as well as this Shardwalker army. So both of us have basically the same amount of forces. Putting down the Shredder Turrets here with the Quad Turret. You can see that fourth turret on the hub itself. This is um, definitely a rarity in uh, games because back in the day that would desync. And nowadays it is safe to do so as long as you're playing on the 1.02 Plus uh, patch, which is uh, the R21 map packs. You can uh, download those uh, map packs from the video description down below. I'll provide links for that. And uh, as mentioned in the start of the video, uh, you will find the 4K mod as well there. This Radicate Hexpod, uh, albeit not garrisoned up, is going to get uh, himself a lot of um, uh, resources because the recycler system uh, generates resources for every single kill. And you can see the Shardwalkers, when they crush my infantry, are generating funds. He's getting so much money here. My army is being converted into Senna's uh, bank balance, so he's got loads of resources with this Radicate Hexpod. He should garrison that Hexpod up with some infantry the disintegrators, but he's going to have it ha a hard time to do that right now. And now this Redeemer does use its Rage Gen. That Ravager could have gone in the um, Hexpod, but it did get Rage Gen. So this Hexpod just does not have the ability here to keep it going. Start we're going for more infantry. Shardwalker's uh, moving in Hexpod as well. He's trying to crush my infantry, trying to stop me from getting more of this infantry out before I get a critical number of them. And this Redeemer moving in with its Flamethrower will finish off the remaining, the remainder of those uh, 
Corruptors. And now the Redeemer is going to solo versus this army. There's so many Corruptors there, so this Hexpod is going to be basically untouched. Moving into this base, and this is going to be a close one indeed. The Hexpod is doing what it can. It's going to be forced back to retreat, and I'm focusing on the Corruptors. Or I should be, because those are the more um, vulnerable units here in this fight. And since there is no more phase to be used on this uh, force, then yeah, this Hexpod is going to fall pretty promptly, but my, not before this uh, Gunwalker comes in and crushes a ton of my uh, units there. So that's unfortunate for me, and I'm going in for the other Corruptors. This Hexpod is... Uh, it is there. It's it's going to struggle to retreat, given how I have this infantry, and I can sell that Shrilator off and get the buff on the rocket squads which will do colossal damage to the hexpod if it takes that rear damage and instead of focusing on the redeemer i'm going for these corruptors because those can heal up that hexpod to full health pretty quickly and now i'm finishing off this redeemer by targeting it down that veteran c on the redeemer is going to give it the dps i need to finish off the remainder he remaining health of the hex that is going to be gg and i thought that's a pretty good game there on r21 game I definitely thought that was highlighting again as I mentioned there was a lot of mistakes from either side but I still thought it was a great game and I hope you guys did enjoy watching it as well anyways if you enjoyed watching this game guys then don't forget to hit the like button I really appreciate that and before I leave I'd like to give a big thank you to everyone who has been supporting me and my uh, YouTube channel as well as my mods um, you guys on Patreon uh, definitely keep this going and the patches as well were in no part thanks to your support so yeah this is going to be Master Leaf. peace out